A geostationary orbit, often referred to as a geosynchronous equatorial orbit geo, is a circular geosynchronous orbit 35,786 km miles above Earth's equator and following the direction of Earth's rotation. An object in such an orbit appears motionless, at a fixed position in the sky, to ground observers. Communications satellites and weather satellites are often placed in geostationary orbits, so that the satellite antennae located on Earth that communicate with them do not have to rotate to track them, but can be pointed permanently at the position in the sky where the satellites are located. Using this characteristic, ocean color monitoring satellites with visible and near-infrared light sensors can also be operated in geostationary orbit in order to monitor sensitive changes of ocean environments. A geostationary orbit is a particular type of geosynchronous orbit, which has an orbital period equal to Earth's rotational period, or one sidereal day 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds. Thus, the distinction is that, while an object in geosynchronous orbit returns to the same point in the sky at the same time each day, an object in geostationary orbit never leaves that position. Geosynchronous orbits move around relative to a point on Earth's surface because, while geostationary orbits have an inclination of zero degrees with respect to the equator, geosynchronous orbits have varying inclinations and eccentricities. History The first appearance of a geostationary orbit in popular literature was in October, 1942, in the first Venus equilateral story by George O. Smith, but Smith did not go into details. British science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke popularized and expanded the concept in a 1945 paper entitled, Extraterrestrial Relays Can Rocket Stations Give Worldwide Radio Coverage? published in Wireless World magazine. Clark acknowledged the connection in his introduction to the complete Venus equilateral. The orbit, which Clark first described as useful for broadcast and relay communications satellites, is sometimes called the Clark orbit. Similarly, the collection of artificial satellites in this orbit is known as the Clark Belt. The first geostationary satellite was designed by Harold Rosen while he was working at Hughes Aircraft in 1959. Inspired by Sputnik, he wanted to use a geostationary satellite to globalize communications. At the time, telecommunications between the US and Europe was possible between just 136 people at a time, and reliant on HF radios and an undersea cable. Conventional wisdom at the time was that it would require too much rocket power to place a satellite in a geostationary orbit and it would not survive long enough to justify the expense, so early communication satellites were placed in a low Earth orbit. The first of these was the Passive Echo Balloon Satellites in 1960, followed by Telstar 1 in 1962. Although these projects had difficulties with signal strength and tracking, the geostationary concept was seen as impractical, so Hughes often withheld funds and support. By 1961, Rosen and a team of 30 engineers had produced a cylindrical prototype satellite with a diameter of 76 cm, 30 in, height of 38 cm, 15 in, weighing 25 kg, 55 pounds, light and small enough to be placed into orbit. It was spin stabilized and produced a flattened waveform. They lost Syncom 1 to electronics failure, but Syncom 2 was successfully placed into a geosynchronous orbit in 1963. Although its inclined orbit still required moving antennas it was able to relay TV transmissions, and allowed for U.S. President Kennedy to phone Nigerian PM Balewa from a ship. The first satellite placed in a geostationary orbit was Syncom 3, which was launched by a Delta D rocket in 1963. With its increased bandwidth this satellite was able to transmit live coverage of the Summer Olympics from Japan to America. 
Geostationary orbits have been in common use ever since, in particular for satellite television. Today, there are hundreds of geostationary satellites providing remote sensing and communications, although many populated land locations on the planet now have terrestrial communications facilities, microwave, fiber optic, even undersea, with more than sufficient capacity. Telephone and Internet access is still available only via satellite in many places in Africa, Latin America, and Asia, as well as isolated locations that have no terrestrial facilities, such as Canada's Arctic Islands, Antarctica, the far reaches of Alaska and Greenland, and ships at sea. Uses Most commercial communications satellites, broadcast satellites and SBAS satellites operate in geostationary orbits. Meteorology A worldwide network of operational geostationary meteorological satellites is used to provide visible and infrared images of Earth's surface and atmosphere. These satellite systems include The United States GOES series, operated by NOAA The Meteosat series, launched by the European Space Agency and operated by the European Weather Satellite Organization, EUMETSAT the Republic of Korea Comms 1, GK2A The Japanese Himawari series Chinese Fengyun series India's INSAT series Communications Satellites in geostationary orbits are far enough away from Earth that communication latency becomes significant about a quarter of a second for a trip from one ground based transmitter to the satellite and back to another ground based transmitter, close to half a second for a round trip communication from one Earth station to another and then back to the first. For example, for ground stations at latitudes of phi equals plus or minus 45 degrees on the same meridian as the satellite, the time taken for a signal to pass from Earth to the satellite and back again can be computed using the cosine rule. Given the geostationary orbital radius r, derived below, the Earth's radius r and the speed of light c, as delta t equals Two C R two plus R two minus two R R cos phi approximately equals two hundred and fifty three mus Display style delta t equals frac two c sqrt r caret two plus r caret two minus two r r cos var phi approximately two hundred and fifty three tilde text mus. Note that r is the orbital radius, the distance from the center of the Earth, not the height above the equator. This delay presents problems for latency sensitive applications such as voice communication. Geostationary satellites are directly overhead at the equator and appear lower in the sky to an observer nearer the poles. As the observer's latitude increases, communication becomes more difficult due to factors such as atmospheric refraction, Earth's thermal emission, line of sight obstructions, and signal reflections from the ground or nearby structures. At latitudes above about 81 degrees, geostationary satellites are below the horizon and cannot be seen at all. Because of this, some Russian communication satellites have used elliptical Molniya and Tundra orbits, which have excellent visibility at high latitudes. Statite proposal 
A statite, a hypothetical satellite that uses a solar sail to modify its orbit, could theoretically hold itself in a geostationary orbit with different altitude and or inclination from the traditional equatorial geostationary orbit. Topic: <laughs> Implementation. Topic: <laughs> Launch. <laughs> 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 A geostationary transfer orbit GTO is used to move a satellite from low Earth orbit LEO into a geostationary orbit. Most launch vehicles used for geosynchronous satellites place satellites directly into GTOs, with on-board satellite propulsion used to reach GEO. <laughs> orbit allocation Satellites in geostationary orbit must all occupy a single ring above the equator. The requirement to space these satellites apart to avoid harmful radio frequency interference during operations means that there are a limited number of orbital slots available, and thus only a limited number of satellites can be operated in geostationary orbit. This has led to conflict between different countries wishing access to the same orbital slots countries near the same longitude but differing latitudes and radio frequencies. These disputes are addressed through the International Telecommunication Union's allocation mechanism. In the 1976 Bogotá Declaration, eight countries located on the Earth's equator claimed sovereignty over the geostationary orbits above their territory, but the claims gained no international recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Orbital stability A geostationary orbit can be achieved only at an altitude very close to 35,786 km miles and directly above the equator. This equates to an orbital velocity of 3.07 km per second miles per second and an orbital period of 1436 minutes which equates to almost exactly one sidereal day 23.9344612233 hours. This ensures that the satellite will match the Earth's rotational period and has a stationary footprint on the ground. All geostationary satellites have to be located on this ring. A combination of lunar gravity, solar gravity, and the flattening of the Earth at its poles causes a precession motion of the orbital plane of any geostationary object, with an orbital period of about 53 years and an initial inclination gradient of about 0.85 degrees per year, achieving a maximal inclination of 15 degrees after 26.5 years. To correct for this orbital perturbation, regular orbital stationkeeping maneuvers are necessary, amounting to a delta v of approximately 50 m per second per year. A second effect to be taken into account is the longitudinal drift, caused by the asymmetry of the Earth. The equator is slightly elliptical. There are two stable at 75.3 degrees east and 252 degrees east and two unstable at 165.3 degrees east and 14.7 degrees west equilibrium points. Any geostationary object placed between the equilibrium points would without any action be slowly accelerated towards the stable equilibrium position causing a periodic longitude variation. The correction of this effect requires station keeping maneuvers with a maximal delta v of about 2 m per second per year, depending on the desired longitude. Solar wind and radiation pressure also exert small forces on satellites, over time, these cause them to slowly drift away from their prescribed orbits. In the absence of servicing missions from the Earth or a renewable propulsion method, the consumption of thruster propellant for station-keeping places a limitation on the lifetime of the satellite. 
Hall effect thrusters, which are currently in use, have the potential to prolong the service life of a satellite by providing high efficiency electric propulsion. Limitations to usable life of geostationary satellites When they run out of thruster fuel, the satellites are at the end of their service life, as they are no longer able to stay in their allocated orbital position. The transponders and other onboard systems generally outlive the thruster fuel and, by stopping NS station keeping, some satellites can continue to be used in inclined orbits where the orbital track appears to follow a figure 8 loop centered on the equator, or else be elevated to a «graveyard» disposal orbit. Derivation of geostationary altitude In any circular orbit, the centripetal force required to maintain the orbit FC is provided by the gravitational force on the satellite FG. To calculate the geostationary orbit altitude, one begins with this equivalence F C equals F G display style math BFF underscore text C equals math BFF underscore text G by Newton's second law of motion we can replace the forces F with the mass M of the object multiplied by the acceleration felt by the object due to that force M a C equals M G display style m math bf a underscore text c equals m math bf g. We note that the mass of the satellite m appears on both sides. Geostationary orbit is independent of the mass of the satellite. Calculating the geostationary altitude, therefore, simplifies down to calculating the altitude where the magnitudes of the centripetal acceleration required for orbital motion and the gravitational acceleration provided by Earth's gravity are equal. The centripetal acceleration's magnitude is a c equals omega two r display style math bf a underscore text c equals omega caret 2 r where omega is the angular speed and r is the orbital geocentric radius measured from the earth's center of mass the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration is g equals g m r 2 display style math bf g equals frac gm r caret 2 where m is the mass of earth 5.9736 times 1024 kilograms and g is the gravitational constant 6.67428 plus or minus 0.00067 times 10 minus 11 cubic meters kilogram minus 1 s minus 2 Equating the two accelerations gives R three equals G M Omega two R equals G M Omega two three Display style r carrot three equals frac gm omega carrot two to r equals sqrt three frac gm omega carrot two. The product gm is known with much greater precision than either factor alone. It is known as the geocentric gravitational constant mu equals three hundred and ninety eight thousand six hundred point four four one eight plus or minus zero point oh 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 eight cubic kilometers s minus two. Hence, R equals mu omega two three 
display style r equals sqrt 3 frac mu omega caret 2 the angular speed omega is found by dividing the angle traveled in one revolution 360 degrees equals 2 pi rad by the orbital period the time it takes to make one full revolution in the case of a geostationary orbit, the orbital period is one sidereal day, or 86164.09054 s. This gives omega approximately equals 2 pi rad 86 164 s approximately equals 7.2921 times 10 minus 5 radian per second display style omega approximately frac 2 pi tilde text rad 86 164 tilde text s approximately 7.2921 times 10 caret minus 5 tilde text radian per second the resulting orbital radius is 42164 kilometers 26199 miles subtracting the earth's equatorial radius 6378 kilometers 3963 miles gives the altitude of 35786 kilometers 22236 miles Orbital speed is calculated by multiplying the angular speed by the orbital radius v equals omega r approximately equals 3.0746 kilometer per second approximately equals 11068 kilometer per hour approximately equals 6877.8 mph display style v equals omega r approximately 3.0746 tilde text kilometer per second approximately 11068 tilde text kilometer per hour approximately 6877.8 tilde text mph by the same formula, we can find the geostationary type orbit of an object in relation to Mars this type of orbit above is referred to as an areostationary orbit if it is above Mars. The geocentric gravitational constant gm which is mu for Mars has the value of 42828 km3 2 and the known rotational period t of Mars is 88642.66 seconds. Since omega topic 2 pi t using the formula above the value of omega is found to be approximately 7.088218 times 10 minus 5 s minus 1 thus r3 8.5243 times 1012 cubic kilometers whose cube root is 20427 kilometers the orbital radius subtracting the equatorial radius of mars 3396.2 kilometers gives the orbital altitude of 17031 kilometers Orbital speed of a mars geostationary orbit can be calculated as for earth above V equals Omega R approximately equals one point four four seven nine kilometer per second approximately equals five two hundred and twelve kilometer per hour approximately equals three thousand two hundred and thirty eight mph 
Display style V equals Omega R approximately one point four four seven nine tilde text kilometer per second approximately five two hundred and twelve tilde text kilometer per hour approximately three thousand two hundred and thirty eight tilde text MPH. Topic See also Graveyard orbit List of orbits List of satellites in geosynchronous orbit Orbital stationkeeping Space elevator Notes <laughs>